Hello, this is Michael Menduno with OzTech TV, and I'm here with Dr. Bill Stone. Bill, I know that your Wakulla, famous Wakulla 1 1987 project really kicked off mixed gas diving and rebreathers, even dual rebreathers, which is a thing today. Wakulla 2, you uh, brought in the mapper, digital mapper, which led to you creating the autonomous sunfish vehicle. And now I understand you're going back for Wakulla 3, Rise of the Machines. What? Talk to me about that. Uh, well, so uh, it's been a long uh, process getting here, but the... Uh the idea of, of developing underwater equipment is really what Wakulla 1 was all about. You know, we had a, there was an open opportunity there, and a lot of cave divers in Florida wanted to go to Wakulla, and so yeah. that was the, you know, it was low-tech compared to today, <laughs> today's right. standards. Uh, but the, the real uh, fork in the road, if you will, was at Wakulla 2, where we had this uh, mapper to, to build mm -hmm. 3D live maps of, of the cave as, as you went through. And uh, that actually uh, led directly to uh, 22 years of work with NASA now, uh, trying to build systems to uh, explore on, on their own and detect life under the surface of the uh, mm. moon of Europa mm. and Enceladus. And, and, and so we've gone through five generations of, of different wow. vehicles so far, and Sunfish is the latest generation. It's portable, and, uh, and it's beginning to show um, behaviors that are reliable in mm. terms of uh, emulating what a cave diver would do and, mm. and so being able to explore on its own and so the the idea for we'll call a three is that we're going back to a place that 23 years earlier we had a 165 person team yeah. we had floating decompression habitats we had redundant deep dpvs we had redundant rebreathers and all this diver gear and, and now it's going to get replaced with something that is less than 100 pounds that two people can walk into the water. It's, it's effectively a, a, an intelligent DPV. Wow, um, yeah. And so the goal, at least with this project, we're, 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 not, we're not trying to break any records or anything like that. This is more about code development and mm -hmm. capability. And so what we're gunning for is the ability to have the vehicle go into... To, as far as the vehicle goes, that, that tunnel is mm -hmm. unexplored. It doesn't know that the divers have been in Wakulla right. you know, to, a, to a great distance. And so it's using that environment to test these behaviors mm. to explore. But the big twist with Wakulla 3 is that we've got a 6K cine camera on there. And so the robot mm. has to come up with a, an effective means to light the walls of the cave mm. and move at a distance that is uniform enough so the imagery can be utilized at all every square meter of the tunnel. Wow. And so if you might imagine you've got a tunnel in Wakala that's 50 meters in diameter, how do you get an image mm. that is precisely good all the way around that? And so the vehicle is going to have to do these mm. patterns where it finds a way to go along the wall and say, okay, that's good imagery, but i got to mm. come back here and relight that. Catch all the detail. Yeah. And so it's going to do all that on its own. Wow. So, so the code to do that is being written right now, and it's we don't even know what the trajectory is going to look like. You know, it might be all over the map, you know, doing huh. this kind of stuff. But the goal in the end is that we have uniform 6K imagery around wow. the entire tunnel, and then that gets texture mapped to the 3D geometry that we, that we pull out with the acoustic instruments. Wow. And so the goal is a... Uh, museum grade walkthrough. So you, mm. you put on a VR headset and basically you're walking through what we'll we'll Springs. Springs. Wow. So the, the, the goal, you know, is not ambitious. It's by the end of May, we're hoping to get a kilometer in mm. and have reliable code to do that. Once that works and we're certain that we don't have any bugs in the code, mm -hmm. then it's just a matter of taking off the data link and saying bye. Go, go do <laughs> and, it. And go do it. Yeah. And, wow. and the, uh, by December of this year, we'll be up to 25 kilometers range. Wow. So, you know, if you're like a cave diver, you divide that by three. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so we can do an eight-kilometer penetration uh, and then come back and leave 30% for reserve wow. uh, getting out. And so my long-range goal is that we will reduce the drag of the vehicle, mm. triple that range yet oh, again out to yeah. about 75 kilometers, and go all the way to the ocean. Wow. Yeah, which is one of the big goals. That's yeah. amazing. So that's that's my cave diving goal. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. What uh, we're here at Oztech, of course. Uh, what what were some of the other maybe a highlight uh, presentation or something you saw that was oh, really exciting? There's, there's been some great ones. Uh, the thing that has captured my attention, I think, most is you know I, I live in both worlds, right? I'm a diver, right. and I, right. I I I don't go diving for fun. That's a that's a, that's a funny <laughs> statement to make, but but to me it's a it's a tool. Yeah. It's a tool for exploration. And uh, 
So I've been working uh, very closely with uh, Craig Challen and uh, and Harry Harris and, uh, and the Wet J Mules. Yeah, and yeah. J and JP and Bear yeah. and, yeah. and uh, uh, Simon Mitchell, and uh, we've been having fascinating discussions over the last couple of days on how to safely implement hydrogen diving uh, mm. for work at the Pierce Resurgence. So to me, that was worth coming here just by itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. watch this space, people. So these are just. To a couple of the 42 presentations uh, that we have at Oztec. If you get your on-demand ticket, you can sit on your couch and uh, binge them all. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Michael. All right. <laughs>